The heads of sacrificial victims were displayed on racks, some holding hundreds of skulls. This skull must have been displayed this way. The other interesting observation one can make on this skull is the fact that the individual had its head uh, intentionally reshaped. Um, this reshaping was uh, accomplished by uh, placing uh, boards both on the frontal bone as well as on the back part, which is the occipital bone. Um, and this procedure was uh, done um, early in life, uh, during the first um, years of life. Um, the perforations paint the clearest picture for Dr. Ursid. So this is perhaps the most solid evidence that one can muster to argue that at least some of these remains could be the result of sacrificial rituals. The skull undergoing forensic examination doesn't have skull rack perforations, but was also intentionally reshaped when the child was alive. We can see the practice of intentional reshaping, both from the frontal perspective, which basically entails a, a broadening of the skull, and also, um, if you look at it at, uh, in profile, you will see again this uh, flattening of uh, the forehead uh, and the flattening in the, in the back of the head. I'm very much limited in uh, my ability to determine if uh, this individual was particularly the result of human sacrifice. But um, I would uh, definitely would like to talk to Elizabeth uh, to find more, more clues. The intentional reshaping of the skull tells Dr. Osid that the child died in pre-Hispanic times when this custom was manifest. This was also a period when ritual sacrifice was common. So, could this child have been the victim of Aztec sacrifice?